welcome and ting and ting and ting and we're back with part two of the dark mysteries of ireland's haunted ruins <laughs> historic hauntings that is i hope you guys enjoy part one and we're going to hit it with part two now let's see what is coming up what they have for us here all right let's youtube and sim simmer for many irish families the approach of death is thought to be foretold by the cry of an other world woman the banshee banshees man i've heard stories about them the banshee's wailing has the tone of a real woman's voice and her cry is heard near the home of those about to die. If this cry is heard three nights in a row, that person will certainly die. The banshee is more often heard than seen, although some people claim to have glimpsed an old woman who combs her long white hair as she laments. Okay, you can stop with the woman screaming though, that's, that's freaky. <laughs> In whatever form ghosts manifest themselves, none is more terrifying than what is called the elemental. The elemental. This type of spirit is said to exist near Burr in County Offaly, where it inhabits Lepp Castle. The elemental is a frightening phantasm from the beyond that envelops those who experience it in its malignant force. The ghost is so horrifying, its hauntings bring an overwhelming sense of evil and deep-rooted fear. <laughs> and in one remarkable recorded instance, a witness had an intimate experience with this horrifying apparition. She felt the touch of the appalling thing, known at Lep as It. It. Built in the 14th century, Lep is said to be the most haunted castle in Ireland. As if the very stones were rejecting human habitation, the castle lay in ruins for years. Tall and lonely, the fortress had a ghostly reputation so strong that local people avoided it at night. Completely Ow. gutted by fire, Lep was boarded up, its gates padlocked for over 70 years. But from across the fields, late at night, locals would describe seeing the windows at the top of the castle light up for a few seconds as if many candles had been brought into the room. Homeless when people. the elemental haunts the castle, the temperature suddenly falls. There is a suffocating, sickly sweet odor and an overwhelming sense of dread. The vile elemental, it, seems to have been born out of the long and turbulent history of Lep. And this room has been a witness to its ruthless past. It is known as the Bloody Chapel after a shocking murder that was done on this very spot over 400 years ago. On the death of the chieftain Mulrooney of Cal in 1532, a fierce rivalry for the leadership erupted among the family. Brother opposed brother in a bitter contest for power. One brother was a priest, his opponent another brother named Tig. One night in the castle chapel, the O'Carroll priest was saying mass for a group of his family. As he was chanting the holy rites, the door of the chapel opened and his rival brother Tig burst in. Tig lunged forward with his sword, fatally wounding his brother. The butchered priest fell across the altar and died. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, though. Act no, wait a minute, though. Yeah, okay, you kill a priest? All right, there's going to be some hauntings going on in that bad boy. <laughs> in the middle of a sermon, too? 
Come on, dude. You want to leave some vibe on that castle. Killing a priest in the middle of a sermon with witnesses and ting, do you? Wow. The things people would do for power. You know what I mean? But speaking of which, man, when I was a kid, I was absolutely petrified of nuns and priests. Petrified of them. I was petrified of going into the Catholic Church too when I was really young. There was just something about that place that scared me and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the echo in the, whenever they did they, 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 they singing or the lamentations or whatever it is that they did in there. But uh, and going for the scariest thing I've ever do was going to confession. I was petrified of that priest, man. I didn't want to go in there. <laughs> so hearing this story about a man killing a priest, I think let's see if it's the priest that's haunting the place. Act of brother killing brother, and the blasphemy of a sacred mass cut short by evil sent an echo of misery ringing round the walls of Lep Castle. But another source of evil was found here at Lep. It is called an oubliette, a name used to describe a hidden dungeon. It means a little place of forgetting. And those who were forgotten within these walls suffered unimaginable misery and pain until death. Wow. Lep's oubliette is a little room with a drop floor off the bloody chapel. Prisoners from clan wars or family enemies would be pushed into the room to fall through the floor and land on a spike eight feet below. Prisoners not lucky enough to die quickly on the spike faced gradual starvation in a doorless room while the sound of merriment and the aroma of food drifted up from the rooms below. Wow, wow, that's crazy. A narrow window let the prisoners watch those who came and went in freedom at the castle. At the turn of the last century, workers were given the task of clearing the oubliette. They made a hideous discovery. Human skeletons lay piled on top of each other. No, that they had those people had to be serial killers. I'm sorry. You can't have clan people that you hate so much from people from other clans that you hate and you're just killing them because they're from different clans like that. I know that's some kind of silly, but my goodness, man, you know, they, well, somebody there had to be a serial killer to be doing that. And how many innocent people they tossed down there? How many wives they wanted to get rid of that they tossed down there? You know what I mean? How many disobedient children, you know? I mean, shoot, one brother killed another brother while he was given a mass. So what? A lot of innocent people probably died under there. That's crazy. Three cartloads of bones were removed. Wow. Yep, that's, a, that's, that's, that's an ancient serial killer right there. It was shortly after the gruesome discovery within Lep's oubliette that a psychic disturbance caused the elemental it to emerge. In 1659, the ownership of Lep Castle passed in marriage from the O'Carroll family to an English family, the Darbys. In the possession of the Darbys, Lep became a family home. It was improved and extended, the gardens landscaped, and a full staff employed to maintain it. By the late 19th century, descendants Jonathan and Mildred Darby looked forward to bringing their family up at Lep. As was the fashion of the day, Mildred Darby was interested in the occult. Little did she know that her innocent dabbling would bring her face to face with it. Because of its bloody associations, Lep had always had a reputation for being haunted. Shall we begin? Oh, Nevertheless, yeah. Mildred naively toyed with magic. Oh, my goodness. As if sensing Mildred. a call from the daylight world, the dormant elemental awakened with ferocity. Mildred, you done done it. OK, Mildred. Yeah, Mildred. 
1908, Mildred wrote an article for the journal The Occult Review, describing her ordeal at the hands of the terrifying manifestation that infested Lep. Mildred seemed so comfortable. I was standing in the gallery, looking down to the main hall, when I felt somebody put a hand on my shoulder. The thing was about the size of a sheep. Thin, gaunt, and shadowy in parts. It, its face was human, or to be more accurate, inhuman in its vileness. Its lustreless eyes, which seemed half decomposed in black cavities, stared into mine. The horrible smell, which had before offended my nostrils only a hundred times more intensified, came up into my face, filling me with a deadly nausea. It was the smell of a decomposing corpse. Why did this elemental inhabit Lep? Could it have been the combined horrors of the bloody O'Carroll murder? And all those lost, dead souls walled up in the oubliette, drifting in despair to death? Whatever it may have been after Mrs. Darby's experiments with the black arts, the castle was never the same again. Hauntings plagued Lep, leaving a sinister air throughout the castle. The Darbys stubbornly remained at Lep, but in 1922 the castle suffered another misfortune when, as the home of an English family, it became the target of the Irish struggle for independence. Oh, wow. The castle was destroyed by bombs and completely looted. Nothing but a burned-out shell remained. The Darbys were driven out. Eventually, in the 1970s, Lep was bought by an Australian who had links with the area. At this time, a mystic, a white witch from Mexico, was brought in to exorcise the castle. What? He got from After Mexico? spending many hours in the bloody chapel, the mystic explained that the spirits at Lep were no longer malevolent, but they wished to remain there. Six years ago, Sean Ryan and his wife Anne bought the castle. A complete ruin. When they arrived, the family is making it habitable again. In the meantime, they live in the castle gatehouse with their young daughter. Well, shortly after we arrived here, Sean began working on the building. unfortunate accident and he broke his kneecap which actually had to be removed and it set us back about a year with the work. Uh oh. When the kneecap repaired he started to work again. They try to kill you Bobby. He had another accident and broke his ankle. And we began to think that we weren't really wanted here, there was something no. going on. But um, we've overcome that now and we're back restoring the building again. So we're, we're happy to share the place with whatever hey, spirits hey. are here. No. In 1991, Lep's walls echoed to an unfamiliar sound, laughter. Friends and family gathered in the chapel to witness the christening of Sean and Anne's young daughter, Kira. Strewn with flowers and lit by candles, the chapel was filled with smiling faces. We had a marvellous day, all our friends in great atmosphere, so we think we've laid to rest anything that might have happened previously. After the ceremony, every guest noted how even though there was a strong wind blowing in from the fields through the open windows, 
The candles barely flickered and not one blew out. If Lep's troubled spirits are unwilling to leave, let us hope that at least they have found peace. In this land where so much is attributed to myth and legend, the castle ghosts we have encountered remind us that not all mysterious events belong in storybooks. We live them. For the people who come face to face with ghosts, the images are a real and often shocking reminder of a world beyond our own. In Ireland's castles, it is as if spirits from thousands of years ago reach out to touch us. The sorcery of an ancient people casts a spell over the living. Spontaneous manifestations assault the senses with their intensity. The anguish of violent death leaves a grim influence. Can the tormented spirits of the past ever be laid to rest? Wow, oh man, this was an intense viewing here. I mean, do you believe there's a, another dimension? And if you do, how come most of us don't encounter it? You would think with all the centuries and centuries of us living here, more people would have encountered it than not encounter it. But then again, do we actually encounter it, but we, doesn't, we don't know it's happening at the time? Like a room all of a sudden getting cold. Or I'm sitting on the beach in the hot sun and a cool breeze go by. Does that mean like a spirit wandered across the beach? You know what I'm saying? At night when you hear voices and you look out and you see no one and you keep looking and you see no one, does that mean that the spirit is walking? Or sometimes you, you hear, a, okay, like, I, 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 here's one thing I think that most people have encountered. A, a, a past parent who, who, have, who had died before, you hear them call you at night or sometime in the day, you know, like, I've experienced that. I've heard my mom say Anderson sometimes. Is that she's in another dimension trying to contact me, or is it my imagination? Or is it my spirit reminding me of her spirit or something like that? It has nothing to do with her being present. It's just that my subconscious is connecting me to her somehow. What do you all think, man? Comment down below. Let me know what you all think. I hope you guys enjoyed this, man. I'll leave a link in the description for this uh, video so you can check it out yourself without me babbling all the time. And I'll also leave links to other videos that I watch on Scotland. And thank you all for all the comments I'm getting. And uh, please, if you have anything you want me to react to, in the comment in the description, there's an email address. Send anything there. I'll, I'll, I'll more likely get it there than if you put it in the comment section, okay? Thank you all again for watching this with me. I hope you guys are having a great day. Y'all take care of each other. Cool runnings.